Oh, well. Let's go take this walk here. So, this will probably be the final time I'll probably fucking ever come to this place. Unless I have my dream come true. Let's just throw an event here. You know, one that this place has never seen before. Let's put together the group to, to do a major three day event. I spoke to a lot of people and that's my goal in the next five or six years to rent this entire facility for about 3.5 or some dumb number for the whole weekend. You know, or put together a, a team to throw an event. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody my fucking ideas except for the people I already spoke to. But it's a very sound idea. The facility is here and we have to have a fucking brain. I know all the vendors. Fucking ain't nobody's fool. So, a friend of mine asked me a few minutes ago how I'm doing. Slapping on stomach, says he's probably doing good. So the guy used to work for Ricky. I don't know, Ricky. We'll just use Ricky for now. He looked great, but he don't want to be here. People don't want to be here. So, the people that was racist towards me. Only one of them still works here from what I heard. The other one quit a couple months later because, you know, his father got him a job anyways. But everybody has a dysfunction. Uh, a moment in time where everything gets stuck and, and gets stuck. And, uh, what happened to me here is what triggered that my life. Now, a friend of mine, he went through a male life crisis, they call it. And, uh, he went through it. His crisis lasts like six years. Shit that happened to me happened in 2006. God damn, bro. Well, you dressed down, your pennies and everything. What the fuck? Okay. So... This shit happened to me 11 years ago. My goal was to have a job to, what's the word, to, uh, what's the word, to uh, have a job to uh, accentuate my wife's job, to accommodate my wife. You know, it's like, you know, she's got an excellent job and, you know, I'm in stage, I need to have an excellent job too, you know. And young couple and, and children and uh, do the right thing type of shit. I took a pay cut to come here. And the people gonna tell me it's all about the money. One year I offered to to take a dollar off my pay and to give the four guys that work for me twenty five cents raise each one of them. People don't make sacrifices and shit. In respect for other people. People just don't give a fuck. But then, you love your job. And I loved working on the equipment, being here. I loved it. I loved the whole feeling. This was the Super Bowl. Every fucking year, this was the Super Bowl for me. 21 days straight, no fucking rest, no sleep, money. Like I said, I took a pay cut to come here, a pay cut every year to work 1,350 hours. And I fell in love with this place, and I had my feelings crushed because somebody called me nigger, and I'm like, come on, man. It was 11 years ago. Haven't had a full-time job in 11 fucking years. Because I can't wrap my mind around in 2006, somebody be called out their name, pretty much giving somebody a piece of paper that say niggers and some ducks on seat. It's like it was yesterday. 
and they wonder why people don't do anything. Don't get me wrong. After this job, I was still working for another company here within the program. And one of the co-workers was like, who allowed him to go to Hawaii? How can he go to Jamaica? And then the boss and his wife, they went to New York for vacation. I promised the wife that I'd come do some work for her. And what happened? Show up at the job. And everybody else want me to do their fucking job for them. Big fucking fuck up. Lost that job too. Because people was ignorant. The same woman who had a fucked up problem with me or whatever, I was telling her about cleanliness in a fucking restaurant. This is cow shit and cow piss here. I went from cow shit and cow piss to a fucking restaurant. That's how clean that fuck I am. Shit, I was a maintenance supervisor for a food company that owns seven McDonald's. Don't fucking tell me about cleaning a fucking restaurant. So I pointed out some shit to this lady while I was on my off day at work helping out. I literally worked here today. I helped out three people today. Went to the restaurant, helped out at the restaurant for about 40 minutes. Then I walked over, walked over here and helped out uh, a couple people move some banners and stuff. And some uh, flags. I took some shit down off the fucking uh, rafters and shit over there for a friend of mine. I'm not a black person who don't want to fucking work. I had a job that I would have killed for. I would have broke somebody's legs for some shit up here. I, I caught a 32-year-old 32 year old dude, I'm not gonna say his race or ethnic ethnicity, but he was slightly slow. Wasn't a white guy, wasn't a black guy, put it like that. Wasn't a Mexican guy either. This guy's riding on the golf cart with some other guy, and he pulls up back to a little girl. And he says, Are you a bean or a taco? And he laughs in her face. This is a six or seven year old kid walking with his back turned to a parent and there's an adult on a fucking golf cart doing shit like that to a fucking child. So, I'm like, okay. A couple of hours later, a female employee says he took his picker and was trying to untie her shoes with it and was t touching on her with the picker. And then, the last straw for me was he was on the back of the golf cart. I should take you right where it was happening. He stood on the back of the golf cart. And then he stood on something else or something. And, no, he stood on the back bumper. And tried to look into the bathroom window. And there's a lot up there. But there's another lot we have. They have, sorry. And, um, uh, once I heard that, right, and I'm like, you know what, man? Nobody stand up in this deal. So I waited until, like, three of the supervisors in the room and shit. Everybody's in the room, dude walks over to the phone and says, I want to use the phone. I'm like, no, you're not going to use the phone. You can't use the phone. Uh, Steve isn't here because Steve ran the desk up there. Steve's not here. You, you can't, I said you can't use the phone. Who are you? The person telling you you can't use the phone. And everybody stopped. And the room got cold. And the dude looked at me and he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, no. Another thing, um, not only can't you use the phone, the next time if I catch you talking to any children, touching on any children or any other person around here, looking through any fucking windows or anything, I'm not only going to call the police, but I'm going to have the police beat your ass. This guy's a little slow. So now he's whining like a baby. I need to use the phone. Like, you're not going to use the fucking phone. Why don't you go get a cell phone? Go go borrow somebody's phone. Go do something else. You're not using this phone up in here in the office to the shop store get back. So then I went, I doubled down. As I tell you what, the next time you come up in here, you pick on people, I'm going to beat your ass. Then I'm going to call the police. Because I will citizens arrest your motherfucking ass for what the fuck I already fucking heard. They're going to get rid of your ass. I'm going to get rid of your ass. That's what I told them. The phone's ringing right now. So, um, Supervisor Garcia, the one who thinks they you know, I'm just a guy starting shit. He comes, hey, you can't talk to nobody like that. I'm like, listen to this. You got kids. You have a daughter. You got two daughters. 
What if somebody walked up to your daughter with a picker and started poking at her and trying to touch her with a picker? What if your daughter's in the bathroom trying to change and they're doing some 4 H shit and some fucking grown fucking man is looking through the window with his big ass fucking glasses? You got a fucking daughter. Now walk the fuck up out of this place. I was a controversial character here. I was the only black dude working here. In the capacity that I was working. There was other brothers here that come in here and they'd be working and then they were ignorant. One time, right over at the racetrack, the boss is like, can you talk to these guys? That's my first day back after being gone for, you know, the off season. So I'm back, I'm talking to these dudes, right? And now they're working. Here comes Garcia. As soon as I got these motherfuckers working, they come fucking side bust and fuck up the whole fucking thing. I mean, there was Jesus fucking, he was my, um, what is it, arch enemy up in this motherfucker. I mean, I had people hazing me and fucking with me. One dude told me, they treat me like a nigger around here. This is no offense. I'm like, fuck, ain't no offense. I'm not a nigger. You know what I mean? But no matter what I went through here, how bad it was, no matter what it did to my brain, because I went on one of those long philosophical studies about racism that has not ended. And what I've learned is, like Jesus said, they don't know what they're doing. You gotta forgive these people. But you don't have to forgive nobody. Because after all this time in life, if you've ran from prosecution and you, you're trying to save your family and everything, and you, you're trying to escape Ireland because the king is all fucked up and all these, you know, whatever the fuck is going on. You don't come and inflict tyranny on anybody, especially when you just found your way out of it. But there's a lot of great people out there that don't even believe in that shit. They're not funny or nothing. You can't group everybody in the same box. Like people have grouped us in the same box. One black guy is a criminal, so they're all a criminal. Well, if you give me nothing to do, when I try to do something, you discourage me from doing it. I try to make something of myself, but you tell me I'll never be nothing. I create and invent things, but you take them and you take them and use them for yourself. I'm not built for this bullshit. I'm supposed to be a creator. Use my brain and my mind. But I give people my ideas and they think you're just living in a fantasy world. Well, ideas built this so-called world. Ideas from everybody made this planet what it is. Before we was even here, there was a great technology here. A great technology, greater than anything we've ever fucking seen. And these people that run this world and this track and this time and this dimension believe that they are better than those who came before, but they are slightly, their, 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 their equations are off. There was evil and tyranny forever, but there was way better and a hell of a lot more than what it is now. In other words, revenge doesn't work, people. It never has and it never will. Bad feelings and evil sentiment don't get you nowhere. I will never ever be free if I don't let this shit go. So sometimes in life you just gotta let it go. I have a family member that that really fucked me up in life too. And you know, maybe she didn't understand what she was doing was wrong at the period in time. But eventually, I got to let that go. And with everything, with every journey, there's a beginning, a discovery, find, you know, and then there's that, that got you moment, and then the reality. The guy says, you're studying all this racist shit, what the fuck you gonna do, write a fucking book about it? I didn't write a book about it. For 11 years, I talked about it. I studied it. I breathed it. I 
feel it. I see the fucked up commercials on TV. I see the guy getting in the car and says, we own the North, we own the South, the world is ours. And I know exactly that they're not trying to sell a car. They got the owl on the commercials now telling people it's vacation time. Go on vacation. That means they're trying to go into the holes. They're about to go underground, kill everybody above ground because they're slimy snake bastards. This is those people who want to be free so everybody can be free's world. They're not just black, they're not just Mexican or Indian. They're all people. Because all people are suffering at the hands of one group of people. And it's the same group of people or a different version of the same group of people every single time. And this time everybody, everybody got to sit back and look at the people who are really screwing us over and that little fucking hate we got towards each other. That, that, that shit I studied for the last 11 years. The reason why I can't work around people no more because when somebody says something, I bring up history and history stops me from having something. And a job application, I say, why do you, what happened at your last job? But racial dispute. It's the truth. Somebody once told me, you are too honest. My mama really didn't raise me. And my daddy met me late in the game. But I learned from everybody and everything around me and everybody and everyone that's ever touched me. And I got to do something. Because I told my ex-wife that I lose everybody around me because of this. Because of racism. I told my wife, ex-wife, that you don't want to see what I see. You don't want to know what I know. And um, because once you learn it and understand the inner workings of it, you know that um, you can't unsee it. And um, I tell people, I pray one day I can get back into the matrix and let all this go. Can't. Because I know evil. And I, I, I see how it works, and I can't unsee it. But in order to have anything, you have to be somewhat blind to what's going, around you, going on around you. But to be blind and treat it as if I'm nothing. I'd rather be dead. I would rather be dead than to just accept being treated like that anymore. And I hate saying that because I want to work. I want to feed my family, man. I want to get it all back. But you can't have it all back. You have to give and let somebody take. A school teacher once told me when I went and complained about the little kid calling me nigger in school. I think it was the fifth grade. Mrs. Sorbet's class. Hillcrest Elementary School, Rodale, California. She said, you probably won't live to see your first child being born. And um, 
you will go through the same shit you went through today pretty much your entire life. So you have to be the bigger person. I am 50 years old now. Far beyond the fifth grade. And I am tired of being the bigger person. But what I've learned is a lot of these people don't know, don't understand what they're doing. They do it because they don't see it. They don't understand they're hurting your feelings when they make a black joke or say, hey, some people should keep their bitch in place. Oh, I, I should tell you this story. I was, I was telling somebody, I was like, yeah, some guy's working with that, yeah, you and my wife had a little argument last night. Oh, I just, you know, hate to argue because, you know, you know, women take too long to let that shit go. You know? And this guy asked me, I said, yeah, some guy got to keep their bitch in place. I said to myself, see, if I was a kid, I would have went off on that motherfucker. And this was after the little bullshit at the fairgrounds and everything. I needed a job. And I'm like, it's a bit my fucking tongue. A couple years later, I worked for this kid's family for like three, four years. They still call me every now and then when they need help. The company's not there anymore, but the kid is not a bad kid. The perception is that black people carry themselves a certain way. Most white people think black people carry themselves like they see on TV exactly like they see on TV. No differential from anybody. Not Huxtables on TV. I'm talking about ghetto hood rat good times on TV. They think all black people are like that. And when you hear rap and see rap videos, they think everyone carries themselves like a rap video. The first time the dudes that gave me grief here Met me like, for shizzle, dog. What's up, my nigga? Like, the fuck you just say? I speak English, man. I speak damn good English. And, muy poquito español. Muy. A lot of little. I used to say something like, mas poquito. A lot of a little español. I understand it better than I can speak it. So, um, what I'm trying to say here is this. This place was a place that I made sacrifices for, put myself in position, and I ran over by a train. These guys, family, got families and kids and shit, and they still work for the county. You know, one, like I said, one still works here, I'll probably see them tonight. I've learned after this fairgrounds experiment, experiment, experience that young people are so influenced by what black people do that maybe they're just ignorant. Maybe they was just ignorant thinking they could tell me a black joke with some ducks in the ducks. You know, maybe they were just ignorant because the second kid that I had a similar incident with, he was ignorant. And this year I told him, because I worked with him a couple of days ago, I'll probably be working with him tomorrow. Not a job, because I work whenever I want to, how many hours I want to, whatever day, what night, whatever the fuck I want to do now. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. Most of the jobs I have are with my people. So, um, I slipped and told him. I said, yeah, a long time ago, man, because I was telling him the racial thing, and he's like, I can't believe you went through that shit. It ain't like that. It ain't like that. People ain't like that. Da, da, da. You come on going right. It ain't like that. Ain't like that. And I said, you know what? One time I had a job, and I was telling this person about me and my wife had a little argument. You know what that dude told me? I should keep my bitch in her place. You know, I could have went to post and killed that motherfucker because you don't talk about a man's wife like that. Period. And look on his face was like, what? Because in the back of his head, he remembered it. 
But I pretended like I didn't remember who said it. And then as I tell him things and teach him things, he's a few years younger than me. And I'm not angry or mad at white people. It's because white people are blind because Europeans fucked them. The only thing that, you know, white people and Europeans have in common is the skin color. That's it. Shit, you ain't chosen, you ain't shit. And that's how they think about most white people around here. And of course, why they call you po white trash and shit, make fun of you. That's why they got the Jerry Springer show. So let me say what I'm saying. I'm not mad at white people anymore. Because I know there's no such thing as a white person. That's a lie. That's a thing made up. That's a creation to make a group of people look bad in 2017. Because everything those Europeans did to America for the last few hundred years, who they blaming that shit on now? The white people. The same white people they made these promises to that they never gonna keep. Same white people who run this fucking fair right here, whose kids won't be able to fucking sell cattle in a couple of years. The same white people who struggle and fought hard for this goddamn country and some other fronts. But those people who were given false, a false sense of freedom when they're still endangered slaves. Endangered. That's what they are, endangered slaves. So I'm not going to be mad at white people no more. Because I know these motherfuckers got it worse than us. Because everything black people do, rather good or bad, you see these motherfuckers walking up and down the street copying it. I hate that shit. You don't see me trying to do anything that white people do. Oh, hell, go ahead and make fun of them like uh, they used to do on the first pants set. I'm not like that. I mean, that's not that kind of person. You know, who does that? These people struggle. Now they fucking paying the price for signing up with the devil. But this time, it ain't gonna be blacks and Indians and Mexicans bailing them out. They got to bail the rest of the world out. The same world that they bailed out on. I ain't mad at them no more. I feel bad for them. Because everything is being blamed on those people who took the deal. And look at all the other people that fought with them behind. Like 700 years has passed. 800, whatever the fuck. And look at this shit. What was it, let's say 1681 when they started putting it on paper. 1681 to 2017. And you're just now finding out that you want to fight for your freedom. I ain't mad at you. I'm just disappointed. Because I was told my whole life it was the greatest thing since Wonder Bread. But look at you. Shit, please, you just a full copy of me. And I've fallen apart a long time ago because of the weight on my shoulders. You can't handle this shit. When some big people come in here and take everything from you, say you're worthless, blame everything that's evil in the world on you, you can't handle that way. Everything that's ever bad in this world, they go blame on you. The same fucking people ain't got $15. Pop the piss out of it, window throw it out of it, whatever. What the fuck? The same people struggling on the corner with a sign saying they work for food. The same people, the shit got a farm and shit. But now the fucking banks want to take the goddamn farm because they ain't selling no product because the government won't let them sell product. Woman told me today that uh, Monsanto, they'll buy all these farms next to your farm, right? They'll over fucking populate the farm, right? They'll germinate your farm with their farm and then make you pay because your shit's been germinated by theirs. Or they'll take your crop and sell it. How did this fucking Congress, this Senate, and whatever these motherfuckers got, say they for the American people, but they let a handful of people sell us to different overseas entities? In other words, you sell your own self out. Why are you selling out these same people that die for you? You send them overseas to steal oil for the next people. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. What's happening soon when people don't have to use oil no more? But you can well, kill people for sunlight. Ooh, get over there and steal the sun. What kind of bullshit is this? Everything they've used to make money out of. Where's it at? The internet is killing everything. Killing the movies. Killing the TV. Killing the radio. Come on. Newspapers are dead. The news, which is just like politics, you got two sides, same coin. The news, part of the CIA, the industrial army and complex, the military industrial complex we are part of. 
We are the military for the world. There's already a one world government. It's run by 65 people. And them 65 people want all us poor people to eat, sit, and die. And the last time I checked, there's a hell of a lot of poor white people. And there's a hell of a lot of poor black people. But the people in the middle class who can't hold it no more, people who are tired like me, who go to work but they're told they can't have nothing by the co-workers. There's a jealousy. How can he have? You know, nobody can be free. Even your mind gotta be free. My ex wife, they worked that shit out of her fucking brain. Shit. You know? And there's people who make decisions in some places that don't know their decisions have ramifications in other parts of the company. And come on, man. People gotta wake up, stop doing for their friends and everything, and do for the people around them. I told this one lady, why are you gonna let your neighbor starve? If your neighbor go hungry, he or she eventually gonna come steal some shit from you. We gotta start helping each other. I don't give a fuck what color you are, you know? Because your ass has got it bad too. And who don't have it bad? Do they look like me? Hmm? Maybe these Mexicans and shit run these 500, Fortune 500 companies and, and we're, we're not hiring white people anymore? Hmm? Come on, man. The enemy has a pocketbook, a Learjet, and a corporation out there killing you. And we're going to sit here and bicker with each other and shit over what they tell us to bicker over. We're running out of resources, but we got desert land. We're running out of resources, but we got border land. We're running out of resources, but we're still going to let them poison our water. So where is the reality? When are we going to say, no, you can't let that corporation do this? I don't give a fuck how much dollars he's giving to your next campaign. I don't care if he is, uh, your brother-in-law is on the board. I don't care if you can't get a great deal for our state. It doesn't work like that. There are people out here fucking dying of all colors and shit. And we worried about some old 1962 racism that was started in fucking 1681. We worried about 1681 in 2017. Get a grip, America. Shit, take down a fucking tower. What the fuck you doing? Common sense factor. Spend the money in the small sector. Breaking your neck to go buy some factory made shit in China and Taiwan and North Korea. We're supposed to be at mad, mad with North Korea. How's it make any fucking sense? We at war with China and North Korea. What the kind of bullshit is that? The same fucking people who run this shit are over there in China and North Korea running that shit because those people are same people and the same old guard. A bunch of fucking rich people looking out for themselves and their fucking families. But people, you know, this this next this next part is for the rich people and then I'm gonna let it go. Rich people. You have everything. You've got people giving you hearts. You've got people out here dying, and kids dying, and children dying and shit, waiting for years for transplants. But you've got everything. You live as long as you want to live. But other people have to lose so you can gain. You have all the money in the world. You got people looking up to you because of your accomplishments. And you've done it on the backs of the same people that are cherishing your accomplishments. There may not be enough money to go around in your mind. But even if you had all the money in the world, you would have nothing. If there's no people to look at your accomplishments and everything you've done and all the great things you can do, why wait until there's no people to do anything? You people out there with the ability to change the corporate structure need to understand that corporation will not survive if there's no one to buy the materials in which they sell. 
if I sell people poison hamburgers, how long will it be before there's nobody buying hamburgers? If I believe everybody around me is a degenerate and less than I am, then there will be no one around me. And loneliness is the worst thing you can ever have. And when you get rid of one enemy, you will get another enemy. And so on and so forth. You got the power to build a Mount Olympus and look down and bless people with it. And as they look up at your Elysium flying around and well, we can see it, they'll say, look at those people up there on Sky Tower 2 or whatever the fuck it'll be. Look at, they did a lot of great things for the planet. Look, look at the founding fathers of the planet. We all know you didn't found the planet. We all know your technology is not as good as technology thousands of years ago. These guys are to put some hate on. Rich people. There's no ants to step on. If there's nobody to help up, then what are you going to do? You live out your life in a utopia with no people in it? And then when your robots die, or when your technology fails, or when something happens, or what if there's a disease, and humanity itself starts beginning to just die out? The birth rate on the planet is already dropping. And it's going to drop too far. Your race-based bombs will only kill you. Because they'll mutate. Because we're all of the same stock. Or damn close to it. You have the opportunity to make the world a better place for eons. The more people we have on this planet, the more people there will be on this planet to defend the planet. You have the power to set things right. And all you have to do is release the truth. Tell the truth and start the world over. You don't have to hate each other. If you tell the truth, if the rich people are told the truth, Ain't nobody going to throw you out there and kill you. They just move forward. Because there's no other place to go but forward. And you will be looked at as the rich people that put their money where their mouth is. They didn't try to pull a genocide like Bill Microsoft Gates. Because whenever you decide that some people are not worth living, whenever you decide to start putting people down, whenever you decide that your life is better and that some people aren't worth it, that's genocide. I don't care if you kill one person. I don't care if you kill one million people. Because over a million people have died in the American genocide. You know? Over a million Indians fucking died. Then they was fucking, uh, what's that, uh, Chemical warfare. We gotta, we got to shake these people. You rich people, your grandkids now, your great great grandkids, they will see what you've done. And your people tearing down statues right now, people, and those statues shouldn't be torn down. Those statues should be left as a reminder of what happens when you let uneducated people make decisions for the world. Can you imagine if some alien came down here right now and they only liked one group of people over another group of people and they blessed this one group of people with flight and they told the other people, we're not going to let you fly like birds. You're not going to be able to just lift off the ground like Superman and defy gravity. The way you think the people who can't fly will do to the people who can fly. It's bullshit. You cannot go for that divide and conquer shit because we were never a divided people. And even you, rich people, 
can't go for the divine pound of shit anymore. Because you need every single person on this planet to continue. Because if we're all gone, then you will go soon after. And what was this all for? Nothing. Ain't no devil gonna come out the ground and grant anybody superpowers. There's no sky gonna open up and suck people up who are worthy. If there is an afterlife, we're gonna go there. Everybody's gonna go there. And then what if you send a whole bunch of people to the afterlife before you get there? What's gonna happen when you do? So, in life, as in death, as it was in the beginning, so it will be in the end. It's time to just tell the truth and set the white people free and reset this motherfucker. Let's have the Jubilee. Ain't nobody gonna be mad at you. Just free the world and save yourselves. I wish everybody love and wake the fuck up. Because sometimes it takes more than a year to wake up. Sometimes it takes a lot. That guy does not like me. He gave me such a wicked look earlier today. It's the new boss. Walked in his office and talked to him like I know him for 50 years. This dumb fucker. So, I'm going. I'm going to leave this place. I'm going to leave all the evil and all the hurt and all that bullshit behind. And I swear, folks, I'm going to try my best to never talk about this place in an ill light again. Because if it meant something to me once, and it still does. I want these people to have a great life. I want this company to be good. I want it to make money. I don't hate nobody. Because I know exactly what Jesus knew. You know what Jesus does once you know it. I know exactly what he knew. See why he forgave these people. But he should not have. May whoever God, or whatever God, or whatever God, or whoever God, whatever it is that is greater than us, I hope it blesses the United States of America and all that live in it. Those people who seek to hurt us all and destroy us all, may that same God find a place for them. Thank you. Goodbye.